Well, listen, guys, a lot of you guys have been asking me about the uh, clothing I wear on this show. These are all uh, Harold Finch originals. You guys can get these right now by going to IamHaroldFinch.com and peeking in the store and browsing around and seeing whatever you want to see and buying something right now. You can also, you know, we've got stuff like this. Look, look at that. Ain't that good? It's shiny and new. It, it tastes good, too. Now, what's in here don't come with the cup that you're going to buy, but nevertheless, you can get one there. All right, guys, tonight I have a very special guest, and he believes in simplicity, just like me. Uh, simplicity of messaging and of simply being you. Can you imagine that? He is recognized for his ex expertise when it comes to marketing people, which is most commonly known as personal branding. In his book, Ditch the Act, he shares the art of being perfectly imperfect for fun. Get this. <laughs> he sells, he draws stick figures, and he raps. Yep, you heard it right. He raps, and he's here tonight to perform his debut single. We're doing the fireside chat with him right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Austin <laughs> Ryan Poland. Ahoy, ahoy. Hey, that is a high energy intro. I'm addicted as well. I'm going to hit the subscribe. I'm going to hit the ding <laughs> bell button. Like, let's go. Let's get it, Ryan. Let's go, man. Listen, ditching the act. That is the key, right? You know, it's the obvious and secret that's hiding right in front of our faces. We just think that there's something more complex. We look for apps and we look for hacks and we look for shortcuts. But at the end of the day, what you need to be your best self is right in front of you. And, and the more you hide that, the more you suppress that, the more you, you shy away from who you really are, the, the further the distance from who you are going to actually be. So it's, it's the easy answer sitting right in front, like the keys that you can't find because you're looking mm -hmm. all over the damn place and they're right in front of you the whole time. Oh, listen, Ryan, I'm going to tell you something I did one time, right? I was trying to get in, the, in my car one time, wondering why the key wasn't working, right? <laughs> Looked down and realized I had the wrong set of keys. So many people have the wrong set of keys in life trying to make things work, right? Yes, or you have a white Prius and a lot of people have white Priuses and you go up to a white Prius and you think it's yours and you open it and it just doesn't work. It's because oh, yeah. you have your own vehicle. You stay in your own lane. You don't worry about trying to get into or take a ride in somebody else's car. This is your life, your lane. There you go. Someone did that to me. I, I came out the grocery store a couple of weeks ago. Somebody was trying to get in my car and I was like, <laughs> probably not going to work, man. <laughs> not your keys, not your car. So, <laughs> But why do you think so many people in your travels and in your and you got to perform your single? I mean, you say you rap, you're gonna have to perform that tonight now. But all right, why do you think so many people in your travels that you've encountered have a hard time just being themselves? I believe there are a number of reasons, but I'll say one that I think is front and center is their trepidation about being judged, mm. and I think that if we really look at our own personal lives, like the people who we're closest with were kind of silly. We're sometimes stupid. We make little flubs and we, we're kind of maybe goofy or we're maybe melancholy. We're like we are able to be ourselves around the people who we live with, who we love our family, the people that, that, that don't have a chance to get away with us. Right. Because they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're always there. But I feel like when we go in and for in front of a boss or if we're in front of coworkers or if, if we're on a zoom, there's this like, you know, it's almost like my, my grandma, like sit up, sit up straight. Right. You know, it's right. like we have this pressure once we're outside of our comfort zone to try to focus on what we think other people expect us and how we show up. And so mm. I look at personal branding as a combination of two things. Mm -hmm. It's what you want to be known for, where that intersects with what people know about you. Mm. And if you don't decide what you want to be known for, then you sort of are left victim to what other people think about you. And when you start to take a participatory role in your narrative, 
through mm. your content, through the way you show up, through the way you dress, your mannerisms, just your energy level, you're contributing to what I call brand crumbs that make up the decision in people's mind who you are. And so I think that we put too much pressure on ourselves thinking like, what are they going to think about me? As mm. opposed to investing that same energy and to be like, I'm going to show up and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best and I'm going to bring my energy. And that is what then they will perceive. So it's a matter of like leading instead of being victim to what people think. Okay. And it's, it's, uh, you know, I think people see vulnerability as weakness, mm. but vulnerability is strength. It's courage. It's your ability to share a story about trying to get in the wrong car, mm -hmm. but that creating a moment that was relatable to me that we connected on. Right. So in general, I think social media and the nature of everyone being a broadcaster and a publisher is that we feel this pressure to keep up with the Joneses, keep up with the Kardashians. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it, it really... Like you go on Instagram and you see all this amazing stuff and it quickly makes you feel bad about yourself. Like mm -hmm. who cares about me and my measly something? But I believe that people don't care about your story of success. I think they care about how they see themselves in your story. And when you, when you do open up and when, you know, when you share little things, medium sized things, eventually big things that you're dealing with, people get to know you. Mm. And if they get to know you, it's up to them whether or not they like you. It's totally up to them. And if they do like you based on knowing you, it sets a foundation for trust instead of like a flashbang, look at me or, or, or check this out. So it's, it's right. really, it's a longer term play. And I think one of the biggest benefits of ditching the act is just feeling more comfortable in your skin, having people get to know you and not having to sort of keep up with this, this act that sometimes we, we tend to put on. So, so I got to ask you, at what point in your life did you ditch the act? It was after a long bout of trying to fake it to make it. And mm. it and it didn't work. Um, I wrote a whole bunch of blogs, but nobody read them. I said, I'm a speaker. I'm a great speaker. Hire me. Uh, no, I'll do it for free. And people are like, no, like you, you just sort of look like <laughs> everyone else. I, I will tell you, there was there's two particular inciting incidences that I can I can recall. One is when I was going to get fired from the job that I'm now currently in at a university. And it was um, as a result of hustling and not asking as much permission as forgiveness. And I was brought onto campus to start an undergraduate entrepreneurship program. And so mm -hmm. I ran the thing like a startup, like the university had no idea what hit them. And everybody learned about it. And the thing was just popping off the edges. But I was getting in trouble for throwing seven foot paper airplanes off of the, you know, off of the student center and making a Snapchat ghost and having students hidden in classes and, and getting hoverboards on campus and just creating this awareness. And when I when I was going to get fired, I, I was like, damn it, I'm going to have to rebrand myself one more time. I'm going to have to start over again. People are going to have now have to like, what are they going to think about? Me? I've got I've got to start again. And coming from somebody who's started and failed and started and failed. We all have these sort of do-overs. I was like, that's it. I'm sick of myself and my identity being defined by the job that I have. And at that moment, I was like, you know what? From now on, no matter what job I do, it's going to be one for me and one for you. And that was the moment when I decided to focus on investing on letting people know who I am, regardless of my job. Now I went out there. I'm like, okay, let's build this brand. Google search, check it out. Follow the leaders. See what Gary V says. All the stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I saw was, be a badass. Tell everybody you're the best. Say that you're an expert in something. Because as long as you know more than other people, you're technically an expert. And I took on this persona that I thought was a professional speaker, but it did not get me any traction. I mean, I had like collectively 200 social media following, and I couldn't, I couldn't break break 500 in a collective, like across all platforms. And for me, I was, uh, one of the major moments that I recognized the power of vulnerability. I was in Santa Barbara giving a keynote. And at that point it was one of my largest talks, three camera shoot speakers, you know, the challenge of getting on big stages, you have to get 
proof that you're on big stages. So people hire you for big stages. So I'm like, this is a big, big deal. Uh, probably 500 people in the audience, but this like hundred foot stage, it almost felt like you're in Vegas with this big LED screen. And it was just like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> Although when I was driving up, I felt something weird on my forehead and I'm like, uh, oh, that's, I'm, you know, let's not worry about it. 30 minutes before I'm about to go on stage, I have a crowning pimple on my forehead and I don't get pimples. This is like, maybe it was a stress pimple, but it was like a huge big pimple right in the middle of my forehead. I'm like, the footage is going to be ruined. Like I don't like I, professional speakers don't have pimples. <laughs> and I was really stressed out. So I was texting my friends. I was like, what do I do? What do I do? And they're like, like, you know, get some concealer, do this and do that. And somebody uh, who's actually the co-author of my book said, you need to tweet this. This is a great opportunity for you to actually show that you are not perfect. I'm like, no, 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 no. I would never do that. I'm about to go on stage. He gave me word for word what to tweet. And I tweeted it. Now, granted, I'm a big tweeter. And I had tweeted hundreds of times so far. And there was thousands of tweets in this conference. This single tweet almost broke the internet in that moment of time. Wow. Because people joined on whether Team Poppet, Team Not Poppet, Team Concealer. <laughs> gifts were coming out crazy. Hundreds and hundreds of comments as I'm watching this thing blow up. And it was the exact opposite effect of what I thought it would be. I thought they'd judge me. I thought they'd like make fun of me. I thought this was like, why would, why would a professional speaker say this? Mm -hmm. But I was genuinely like not sure what to do. And I was like, I needed help. Somebody saw it. They came to the green screen room, gave me concealer, said, don't pop it, conceal it. Then when I walk out onto stage, I didn't know, but on the entire hundred foot by 40 foot LED screen was an app that showed all of the recent tweets. So there's my mug across a hundred square feet with me pointing and all like, you know, all these gifts and everything. I was like, oh shit, the cat is out of the bag. <laughs> but at that moment, I felt, I just felt like there's nothing that can stop me now. And I ran up on stage and, and to this day, I remember like the, the, the feeling. And the first thing I said, I was like, yes, my name is Ryan Fuller and I have a zit. <laughs> Are you guys ready? And it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> people still talk about that tweet in that moment. And for me, that was like, oh my gosh, the pressure is off. That yeah. tweet became the most engaged, most impression tweet of the entire four day conference. And that moment I was like, there, there is value in sort of letting people behind the scenes. I mean, the green curtain, right? Look mm -hmm. at the wizard of Oz. He's yep. this big, bad guru. But at the end of the day, you peek behind like, oh, you're just there. <laughs> and then there's this ability to connect humanly. So the first incident is when I recognized I have to build my personal brand so that I invest in my story mm -hmm. and then did it incorrectly for a long time. Cause I thought it was just about keeping up with the Kardashians and being what everybody thinks, being what I think everybody thinks a professional speaker would be. Mm -hmm. And once I started to drop that guard, then people were like, this guy's kind of funny. They, I kind of like this guy. Look at, he's kind of quirky. Well, he draws stick figures. What What is he? He talks about being a ginger. He's like, he's got, and all of a sudden that's when people are like, okay, I kind of I see what's going on here. And for me, I was like, oh, now I can just be myself. So that's, that's a long answer of your short question. That's a great answer though, because you had a life altering experience that turned out to be a great thing for you. That could have been a catastrophic, I guess, but it, it turns out to be a, a great thing for you because it helped push you into you ditching the act and more importantly, getting your ass off the fence to be the speaker <laughs> that you would become that we know now. Right. Absolutely. And and I think that if if you're if you're fearful of how people will judge you, you are on the fence. Yep. And one of the things I talk about in the book is the idea that you don't you, you don't just all of a sudden go out there and emotionally vomit on everybody and say, I'm just going to get everything off my chest. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> no. Okay. Like if you're actually climbing off of a fence, right? Maybe you look and you see, and then you, you kind of put one leg over and you're like, and then you see people are like, Hey, and they come over and they're like, maybe going to help you. And then you put another leg over and somebody grabs onto it. And then you look, and then you sort of jump and people catch you. So there's level one exposures that are putting the wrong keys in the wrong car. It relates level two exposures are about getting in fights with people and, and making and, and talking about how I just got an argument with somebody and I think we both won, but we really both lost right. because we all have challenges with relationships. Level three would be 
financial situations or divorces or things that like you're afraid people will find out. Mm -hmm. But if you share it in context of what you've learned and how you've become who you are because of it, you incorporate it into your content, you answer it with questions on podcasts, then you open up a little more. And then level four, that's the big stuff. That's the stuff that you haven't told anyone. Mm. But as soon as you get to a point and you realize that the community is there and willing to support you through that, then you can share those moments and then you own those moments. And it's that's the real power, knowing that no one has anything over you. No one yep. has anything over your past. It's because it's your story and you've owned it. There you go. See, I'm a firm believer, Ryan, that when you, no one can hurt you with your truth. No yes. one can hurt you with your truth. So yes. wh wh who who better to tell your truth than you? But people are scared. It's scary. It is scary. And it's like, how are people going to judge me? But the point is that you're not sharing in the moment. You're not like, my life is falling apart. Help me out. Because people are like, whoa, get your stuff together. But once you work through things, you can you can open up. And in during this pandemic, you've seen a lot of these influencers who life was perfect. Right. To sort of showing a bit of behind the scenes and being a bit more vulnerable. And people connect with that because yeah. it's like it's like open up the star magazine and the spread where it's like they're just like us. Ben just Affleck like at the market. Look <laughs> at Gwen Stefani at the pool. It was just like I think on a human level, we want to know that however famous you are, you're still you're still a person. You're, you're yeah. still you're still there. Yeah, and that's what people want to know in general. You know, any anytime you are considered an expert at anything or somebody of notoriety, no matter what the medium is, people want to know that they can relate to you and you can relate to them. And so sometimes I think the further up you go, people don't see themselves in you and then it makes it difficult for you to to sell them on things or to promote stuff because they're like, ah, your life is different than my life. I, I can't even relate to that. So, you know, yeah. but so you, you have this thing that you, you talk about called the three, one, three program. <laughs> yes. What is that? The three, one, three, right? It's not an area code of Eminem. Although I found that out after I already had named it <laughs> that the three, one, three is a process and the name stands for the deliverable. Okay. It's, it's a, a method that you can work through that allows you to say what you do in three sentences and then one sentence and ultimately three words. Imagine, wow. think of it as a tuning fork for your messaging. Mm -hmm. Think of it as the bumper bowl lanes. Like, you know how you put bumpers in the, in the bumper in the bowling lane? Yep. Yeah. The 313 are those bumpers so that you throw your messaging down and clink, 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 clink. It gets to the end. Okay. It's focused on what I think is, is the most important piece of information to get across to people. And I, and it starts with the problem that you solve. Okay. Here's a quick question for you. Okay. Pop question. If you had to choose from all the people that have known you and all the people that will know you, do you think they care more about what you do? Or do you think they care more about the problems or the problem that you can solve? It's definitely the problem I can solve. Okay. I ask that all the time and people give me a very similar answer. Like they, everybody agrees. They, they care more about the problem that you solve. Mm. But unfortunately, everyone asks what you do. And then we tell people what we do. But we know that people don't care that much about what we do. And that's why when you meet someone, you're like, hey, what do you do? Secretly, while you're pretending to listen, you're like, I really hope that they ask me what I do so I can tell them what I do. And then when they finish, you jump on it. And you're like, oh. Uh, well, you wait for them to ask you and then you tell them what you do. And they're sitting there going, wait a minute. I wonder if you really listened to what I said, because he seemed to jump on that question. And both of you are like, well, I don't really care what you do. I don't really care what you do. Great. Nice to meet you. Bye. <laughs> so I think we've been asking the wrong question. I think that if somebody asks me what I do, I tell them, like, I do a lot of stuff. But what's <laughs> more important is the problem that I solve. And then I stop talking. And 9.99 out of 10, they're going to ask me, well, Ryan, what problem do you solve? <laughs> what problem do you solve? And the problem is, if you don't put part of your personality into your personal brand, it's never going to work. Right. And now you can identify if somebody has that problem. If they do, and if they're interested in solving that problem, if they're interested in doing it soon, I can help them out. 
but it, I, I haven't even told people what I do. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that the more you talk, the less people listen. And the less you talk, the more people ask questions. Questions creates cu curiosity, mm -hmm. that creates conversation, and that creates connection. So if you really want to, to get to know somebody, get them the basic amount of information so that then the conversation can sprawl from there, as opposed to taking that deep breath and telling everything, 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 everything. like on Clubhouse, okay? You get, you're like, you, people introduce themselves like, hi, my name is Ryan Fullen. I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. I part-time invest over here. I do this and do this. And you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> what? So the 313 is a methodology that boils down your core messaging. And you solve a problem, you have a solution, and you should know what your market is. And once you can clarify that, the content that you create, the, the networking that you make, the relationships that you build, everybody is clear on what you do, what you bring to the table. So it's a fascinating exercise. And I, and I love, I've got a podcast called the 313 Challenge, okay. where I challenge people to go through the process. We should get you on sometime. Yes. But Let's it's, do just it. about, it's just about simplicity, right? Simplicity. Now that sounds simple to everyday people, but people I've learned, especially you, you mentioned Clubhouse, especially on Clubhouse, people make life so much more complicated than it needs to be. Right? And, and, and it's amazing to me because I'm like, well, why? And you're right. When you ask people, I can't think of the guy's name, but the guy who always sits sit on the, uh, well, he used to sit up there on the floor seats at the uh, Laker games. He's at all the championships. I heard him once say, people ask you what you do. They're, tr they're really saying, they're trying to find out how you make your money. Yeah. What, That's what, what they're pro really trying Yeah. To do. What problem do you solve? Right? All right. So, yeah, man. Um, so, well, here, so let's, let's 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 give you a little teaser of it with just with just one of these. So, can you tell me the problem that you solve in one sentence? So, the first part is three sentences. Okay. So, this is just the first part. <clears throat> can you tell me the problem that you solve in one sentence, but with no mention of what you do? Think about this. We talked about people care more about the problem, mm -hmm. not your solution. So, don't tell me your solution. And just for fun and to keep you honest, I've got a buzzer here. And and, uh, and and if you hear the buzzer, something went wrong. And the only thing that can go wrong is if you tell me what you do or you list multiple problems. So can you tell me in one sentence the biggest problem that you solve? And we'll see how it goes. In one, one sentence. Can one I sentence. Just, okay. the, just the problem. Just the problem. So I want to help you out. So don't say I help people. Okay. Don't say I do this because that's all what you do. Think about the people that you, that, that you help out. What is the problem that they have? What is the problem that you solve? So I can't say I help people. Because no. remember, yeah. that's what you do. And that's we just talked about nobody okay. cares about that. Huh? That's a good one, Ryan. It's, it's tough. I know the problem uncertainty okay but put it put it in a sentence like put it in some sort of structure that was just like that was just a word i just blurted out so it, to help you it could be the problem is or the biggest problem is or for okay. entrepreneurs who something that it's just stating the problem for men women and businesses the problem is uncertainty okay well you didn't get a buzzer you get a bell okay <laughs> There you go. That's that's the first step. But but again, it's 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 such a simple question, but such a difficult answer. It really is when you so think about it. If if you're listening, can you tell me the problem that you solve in one sentence without any mention of what you do? And it's so funny, I tell people that and they go, Okay, I help people burn. <laughs> <laughs> what we're used to doing is saying the solution. So what's your solution in one sentence? Oh, wow. <laughs> I feel like I'm on the fence tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last question. Last question. Wait, was that an answer? <laughs> Trace, <laughs> Trace trolling. <laughs> Anyways, okay. we, we, you don't have to be in the hot seat. We'll put you on the hot seat in uh, on my podcast. But the 313 is powerful because it's like a series of Russian dolls for your messaging.
you just get tighter and tighter and tighter. And all of a sudden you're like, whoa, that's, that's what I'm all about. It's not what I do. It's the problem that I solve. And that's here's true. what I do to solve it. And, and here's the people I solve it for. Mm. And it, it just creates this somewhat clarity because otherwise, like you, you, sometimes we tend to be all over the place trying to be all things for all people. That's true. That's true. Now, now I love that mess, that method, because I mean, listen, I, I'm one of those people. I love learning new stuff. And that right there, just hearing you say that it sounded simple when we started. But when you actually get into it, it's a little bit more complex because of I, I'm not saying the process is complex. It's complex because of how we've been taught to think, move and operate. And so now we're stuck in that mode and we're not able to move into the mode, which is, I guess, which is why your program is so successful. Right. <laughs> yep. So let, let me see if I can wrap this up for you. If you've got an idea, why don't you bring it right here? If you want to change the world, I'd love to hear. Now, it could be big or it could be small or it could be for profit or not at all. But if I ask you what you do, do you ramble like a babbling fool? Do you talk so <laughs> fast that you're big in the face? Is your big idea all over the place? Do you say the same thing every time? Do you bore everyone out of their minds? You might even do it and you might not even know it. Your startup hasn't started. All you want to do is grow it. And every time you open up your mouth, you seem to blow it. You wish there was a method or a way you could control it. Well, have no fear. The 313 is here. It will make your message clear. First, you state the problem. Then you say you solve it. And don't, 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 don't forget the market. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ryan's debut album. What's it called? Uh, Ginger Unleashed. <laughs> ginger Unleashed. That, what, what, hell well, of a I, name I, for it, right? Yeah, I, you know, I've been called the Ginger MC because people have no idea it's coming, and then it just uh, I just surprise them with it, and it's it's fun, it's cheesy, it's uh, I enjoy it, and it's a good wrap up. It is a good wrap up. Man. <laughs> Listen, man, you have been fun and, and informative. I love those type of guests. Can so. we call it in? Funitive? In fun of it. We can call it whatever you want to call it. It's your segment, man. <laughs> well, hey, I can't wait to get you on my 313 Challenge podcast. Oh, man. And if people have the problem about not knowing how to personalize their personal brand, they can grab the book, Ditch the Act. They can go to Ryan.online. You can follow me on Twitter. I I'm just always sharing my thoughts and my information. Slices of life. I went lobster diving last night. You, 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 what you see is what you get. And uh, I think that if I could boil it down, my success started when I stopped trying to be perfect. And that's it. But stop trying to be perfect, find ways to relate to people and convince them that you're actually more like them than they thought. Well, that's good, man. I, I love it. If people want to connect with you online, they, they have your website. What's your name on social media? So it's, it's my name. It's Ryan Folland. So on Twitter, it's at Ryan Folland. On Instagram, it's Ryan.Folland. YouTube, Ryan Folland. You know, that 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 me, that 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 me, you can find me. And Just if you Ryan Folland. Yeah, if you want to find Ryan online, go to Ryan.Online. How's that? That's brilliant, man. <laughs> simple, right? Really simple. But brilliant at the same time. If you want to find him online, go to Ryan dot online. We'll there call it. We'll call it Brimple. Brilliantly simple. Br Brimple. You just make it up all kind of new words, huh? You just, just got to innovate everywhere, man. <laughs> everywhere. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on the fence, helping me get my ass off the fence, and also <laughs> helping our listeners as well. Thank you so much again. Thank you, buddy. Keep doing the great work. The great energy. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just like this. Watch it. I have the radio on the telly. <laughs>